happy Father's Day again. We have a very generous father. Would you agree? If you don't know that yet, I hope you get to know that uh, soon. Because uh, the heart of the father is a very generous heart. And it's the, that's really what I want to focus on is the, that incredible generosity of our father in heaven. And uh, so we're, we're, what we're doing today here, we're trying to set out to do is, is talk about our core values. And this is one of our core values here at Discovery. We're talking about the generosity of God. And um, so I'm just going to pray real quick. John prayed already, but I'm going to pray, and then we're going to launch into it. So let's pray together. Father, I just want to thank you for this day. What a fine day. Um, I'm a little keyed up because <laughs> I haven't done this for a while. But that's good. Use it all for good. And, uh, Lord, I just, I'm just thanking you today for a revelation of your goodness. Lord, your heart is so big. Um, what, what kind of crazy love that you would send your son and Jesus that you would come. And that you would uh, accept that assignment and uh, be the second Adam, the one who didn't fail, uh, tested in every way, uh, attempted, and yet uh, passed every test. And you did it for us so that you could lay your life down on the cross uh, and, and then take it up again um, when you rose from the dead. So Jesus, we're just so grateful for that kind of love, that kind of heart that uh, you showed, that Father, that you demonstrate to us because you're so good and gracious and generous. And so we just pray for that kind of revelation. Lord, would you, would you take us deeper or maybe refresh something that we've kind of forgotten? Would you just do that today? We pray it for your glory, for your name's sake, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Good, good news. So speaking of good news, I'm going to start off with a scripture. I'm going to tell some stories. But the scripture I want to start with today is Romans 8. And you could probably spend your whole life just meditating on Romans 8, and you'd get something new every day. It's just a spectacular part of God's word. And in this passage, I'm sharing towards the end of Romans 8, verse 31, he's talking about the good news. And the apostle Paul says this. He says, what then shall we say in response to all these things? Good news he's talking about. What shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, who could be against us? He who not, did not spare his own son, talk about generosity, right? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Can you say all? All. Good. That's a, that's a big word. Three letters, but it's a big word. The generosity of God. Now, on our uh, Discovery website, I, I went to the website and, and looked this up. Did do this, John. <laughs> it says on our website, God modeled generosity by giving us Jesus. Okay, and I can't help but think of just John 3.16, the most popular verse in scripture just about. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. Isn't that good news? So if that doesn't speak to you about generosity, I don't really know what, well, I could probably stop right there. In fact, Janice, she did such a good job on the offering today. I don't know, we don't need too much more. Bless you, Janice. So in you, if you think about that and you start to recognize how true that is and how gracious God is, how good God is, how can you not be generous? That's the question. It's like, how can, how, maybe even you say, how generous can you be? I mean, we've got a, a very generous father. And it's so appropriate on Father's Day. By the way, I just want to say this real quick. I know for Father's Day, sometimes it can be a little bit loaded, depending on your father. I, had, I was very blessed to have, to have a very wonderful, gracious father who came to know the Lord and uh, loved us and demonstrated that in many generous ways. But some of you maybe have lost a father like that. And uh, I, I pray God's comfort and grace to you. Um, or maybe you didn't have a father like that. So I just want to want you to know that we care about you here. And yeah. know that God wants to show you how generous he really is. Even if you had some deficits from your earthly father who was supposed to represent. In fact, we all did. Nobody represents God's true heart but God himself. So I just want to say that before I get launched in here. So I... Uh, I, I became a Christian when I was 19 years old. I, I brought up, my parents took me to church, and 
I, I did some of that, but I still managed to completely get off away from those good values that they were trying to impart to me and just wallow in the mud of my teenage years. And <laughs> yes, and you, a, a knowing laugh out there. And uh, so I was wallowing in the mud of my teenage years and uh, far from God, looking for love in all the wrong places. And I met this fellow when I was just starting college. So I was at the uh, College of Marin, junior college in Marin County, 19 years old, and I met this fellow named Steve Williams. Now, it just so happens today that one of Steve's good friends is here uh, visiting. It's Warner and his wife, Joanne Camp, who I've known all that time, too. Great. Welcome. So I'm going to brag on Steve just a minute, and Warner, will, you could go talk to Warner. He'll confirm, and Joanne, that this is all true. But Steve is this really gracious guy, young man, you know, my age. We were about the same age. I'm maybe six months older than Steve. We were both at the junior college together, and we were in the weightlifting class. Now, I know that might be hard for some of you to believe, but I once lifted weights, okay? And uh, so we were, we were doing that uh, for our PE credit and just to have fun and hanging out, and I got to know this guy named Steve. Steve was really, really friendly, and as it turned out, he was very generous because we got to know each other. He'd take me out to lunch, and I would try to pay for the bill, you know. And Steve, no, 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 I'll cover it. And you know, you're not supposed to fight over those things, right? <laughs> so, so I said, okay, Steve, and he did that several times. Many, I, I lost count. He just was very, very generous. And you know that that generosity had a big impact on me. I wasn't a Christian yet, but I saw in Steve. I said, you know, there's something about Steve that I like. I'd like to be like that. I wonder what's, I wonder what it is that makes him tick. Now, he hadn't told me anything about Jesus yet. And then I started asking him some things, and then some things came up, and the topic kind of, kind of came around, and I, at first I was kind of doubting. I go, you, you believe in that stuff, you know? And he goes, well, yeah, you know, it's, it's really been working for me. And then it turns out that I just got curious, so I started asking a few questions, right? So Steve generously gave up his time, and answered, had some really good answers to the questions I had. And uh, before I knew it, I was at his church uh, for the first time as a 19-year-old, hearing the gospel at Open Door Church. Warner was there. And uh, that day, I gave my life to Jesus. Praise God. And part of that was because I saw this generosity in Steve. In fact, I remember when the they, in those days, they used to pass around. We don't do that. We're very low pressure here. But in those days, they used to always pass the plate, you know? And I remember, I'm thinking, okay, I think I got a dollar in here somewhere. And uh, anyway, then I saw Steve whip out this 20, you know? And I thought, oh my gosh. You know, we're 19 years old. And that was 1977. So, you know, adjust for inflation, okay? Steve was generous. And he modeled it. And when I first came to Discovery, you know, it's been five and a half years. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. I saw that same kind of uh, generosity modeled in uh, John and Vanessa. And I just want to honor that because I've seen it consistently. And I think one of the first times I was out to lunch or coffee or something with John, I, I noticed he had this wristwatch on. I said, yeah, John, I really like this really neat looking wristwatch. Where'd you get that? And he says, well, I got it. I think the pastor, Dave Patterson, gave it to him. And uh, so I have it today with me. So uh, and I have my Fitbit now, so I've, I'm, I've moved on, John. I hope that doesn't hurt your feelings. <laughs> and, uh, but John, uh, you know, it's the funniest thing. Is I, I looked at it, and John said, well, here, you want it? And he, he just, next thing I knew, he's handing me his watch. And I thought, what a sweet guy. Well, how generous. And uh, today, somebody's going to get a watch. Who wants a watch? Okay, come on, Jake, you want to watch? I knew it. Yeah. Right to you, buddy. Good catch. Hopefully I didn't break the... No, you didn't. no, I didn't. Okay, it worked. So, you know, I just saw this incredible generosity that in the way that they were running uh, Discovery and the food, always having food, tons, not even just food, but good food. Of course, I can't eat half of it nowadays because, you know. But uh, just very generous with food, very generous with just a, an open hand to the community. And I really saw, we, you know, we come in, you start being part of it, and I said, wow, look at this. The fires were going on, and they were just giving all these you know, um, offerings to the fire, to the fire victims. Uh, we had every, the kids, we had an outreach to the community with the kids' backpacks every year, and stuff in those backpacks full of stuff. We had 
Um, well, Unsheltered Friends Outreach, Chanel, wherever you are, shout out to you. God bless you. And just these incredible things. We're just reaching out to the community and just really being super generous. I know this is not a big community and we're not, we don't have huge resources, but I saw this constant uh, generosity here and it really attracted me and my wife uh, to discovering. So I bless the Lord for what's been modeled because I know what's at the top trickles down yeah. Yeah. and that's what I see in you guys a real you've been picking it up and being generous that's why we're here in this building so now when you realize really what God has done for us giving us Jesus and uh, what is that how about restoration of relationship Amen. with God himself a perfect and holy God he couldn't be we couldn't be in fellowship without a perfect and holy Jesus who made that sacrifice for us. But he did it. The forgiveness of sin, all of our sin. How about healing? God provides that. I've been through that a couple times. Talk about generosity of God. God healed me of cancer 14 years ago. Yeah, come on. Give it up. Praise your Father. Just recently, I had a pretty tough year this year. Went through some stuff, some health stuff and I saw God's healing again and I feel great now better than I felt in a long time but that's again grace of God he is very gracious to heal us to forgive our sins body soul and spirit heal our hearts when they're broken uh, so it shouldn't be too difficult when we think about that to respond to God the psalmist David the King David inspired by the Spirit said bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits. There's that all word again, huh? Mm -hmm. Who forgives all your sins and who heals all your diseases. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. What's the main point? The heart of the matter is the heart of the matter here. The generous heart. The heart of generosity is the heart of the matter. If God is that generous, and I recognize that, and I begin to get that kind of heart in me, then out of that's going to flow generosity. It can't help but it's just going to happen. That's why the, I think it's a waste of time for anybody to really get up and talk about, you know, generosity in terms of like giving money. Because the scriptures argue this. It says, look, if you get this, if you get that God loves you 100%, 100% of the time, you can't add to it, and you can't even take away from it which is mind-blowing. If you get how good he is that he would die on a cross for you, if you get that he loves you and he would send his Holy Spirit to dwell in you and give you spiritual gifts, then this is all going to be easy. Yeah. Because if he's that kind, in fact, it even, it even says somewhere in Scripture, I can write this one down, but it says, how will God entrust you with the true gifts, the true things of great value, if you don't first show that you get this primary thing, yes. that God loves you, and if he loves you, and he would be that generous to do what he's done for us, then this should be, shouldn't be too difficult once we get that. So recognizing that's huge. Because we've all been given time, talent, and treasure. Three T's, time, talent, and treasure, which we can share with others so that God can be honored. Again, it's not about me. So let's take a look at it. one scripture here. I'm gonna do this scripture. We're gonna go over this, and then we're pretty much gonna wrap it up and be done. You might even get out here early. Nobody's complaining. I pre I preached for I pre there we go. I preached for like uh, I don't know you know thirty years or so, and uh, I had never had a complaint. Well, maybe one time, if I stopped early, and nobody ever complained about that. So I, I learned something there, right? I think John already understands that. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Okay, again, we're picking up here. Let me set it up a little bit. So in this setting, the Corinthians were being encouraged, exhorted by uh, the Apostle Paul to help out their brothers. They had the, another church. Well, the, the, the mother church still in those days was in Jerusalem. And they'd been going through a really hard time. They'd been through some stuff. They had been extremely generous themselves at the beginning, selling property and doing all kinds of sacrificial things to make things happen. And were very, very gracious. But then they ran into some persecution they ran into, you know, kind of being pushed, given the left foot of fellowship from the Jewish community, and they were being pushed out. That was my right foot, by the way. This is my left foot. 
And uh, so they were getting pushed out and they were getting oppressed. And uh, so now they needed some help. And the Apostle Paul's arguing from that guy, you know, you guys, you, you've received spiritual, eternal blessings from them. You know, we need to help them out, right? So he's arguing from that point of view. And then he says this in chapter 9, verse 6. I believe it's on your overhead. There it is. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his own heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a what? Good, cheerful giver. I mean, the word then, the original language, actually, we could translate hilarious. It actually is that strong. God loves a hilarious giver. Are you crazy? No, I'm hilarious. <laughs> I'm hilariously giving to you. So God is so good to give us so much. And so he's saying, look, if you're going to be so sparingly, guess what? It's gonna, you're gonna come, it's going to come back sparingly. But if you will so bountifully... Now, again, I'm going to say this. We don't give to get. Never has that been, and I've been here long enough. I know never has that been emphasized here in this house. You're not ever being uh, exhorted to give so that you're going to get. But I'll tell you one thing, though, that's really a faith builder, because this is really a lot of this giving and being generous is about your faith being yeah. built up, right? Yeah. It's, it's about when you see God keep supplying. It's just like, go, wait a second, I just gave and he gave me more. How did that happen? Right? Yeah, right? So I remember early on, Rob and I first married, we had this, I think it was a tax return. I'm pretty, it was something we didn't expect. It was like some, something that and it happened oh, two, two times, Rob said. $200. So we got this money. Then I asked her for the details. I'll, I'll give you the basic story, but she'll give you the actual real <laughs> truth. Okay? It's actually. So $200. So we got this money, and we, we decided to pass it on to some friends who needed something for something. And, uh, and we, we did that, and another $200 came in, right? Mm -hmm. And then we did, we did this a few times. I don't, kept getting the same amount, $200 right on those. We give $200, another $200. And we were just going, we were just kind of scratching our heads. Like, says, how long can this go? Well, so, somewhere along the line, we decided to keep the next $200. But <laughs> could still be going on if we wouldn't. I remember hearing this about this guy. Um, years ago, there was a famous philanthropist, sea captain, actually, and started off. Jewish man uh, who then, uh, I believe, became a Messianic Jew, and his name was Captain Levi of Philadelphia. And I was just looking this up again. And they, he had a real reputation for being incredibly generous. He was a philanthropist. That's a big word, philanthropist. So this Captain Levi was so generous that people would come to him. And, and one time they said, you know, Captain Levi, how can you possibly be so generous? You know, just to, you give so much. And he says it's very simple. I'll tell you how it works. He says, I shovel out and God shovels in. Yeah. And guess who has the bigger shovel? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's right there. It's like, who's got the bigger shovel? Well, guess what? You'll find out. You just keep doing this and God's faithfulness will blow you away. And that's what we've seen. I mean, Robin and I have been walking with the Lord now for, well, we've been married for, <laughs> she says, well, don't, don't see how many years. <laughs> Date us. But Anyway, it's been a long, long time, more than four decades. I'm just going to say it. So we've seen God do this so many times in so many ways. And um, some people, you know, say, they'll mention, I hear this get mentioned sometimes, like, well, is, is tithing biblical? And I go, well, you know, I know it's not uh, a New Covenant uh, or New Testament um, mandate by any means, but it's just like a start. For me, I was, it was like a starting point. I got taught this, and I think it really served me. It's like it's a good starting point. I mean, if God really owns 100%, if he's redeemed me, if he's bought me back from hell itself, if he's bought me back from, you know, destruction, well, he really owns everything. Mm -hmm. And so I, he's saying, hey, why don't we start with this? Why don't you see what I can do with 90%? You know, if you trust a starting point with 10% to me, why don't you just see what I can do with 90%? And I, my experience is that God makes more out of the 90% that he lets me manage than if I would have managed the whole 100%. Okay? Amen? Did you get that? So it's like God saying, hey, that's a good starting point. Then you're going to get so blessed, you're going to be able to give tithes. You're going to be able to give offerings. I mean, you're going to have, you know, you can just, just watch me supply. And then you go ahead and do with that whatever the Spirit, however the Holy Spirit leads you. But I feel that the Spirit said right from the beginning, you know, support your local church. That's where your real spiritual care comes from. 
You know, are you going to go give some to some other ministry? That's great. Go ahead and do it. But first start with your local church. Because if it comes down to a crisis or comes down to a real point of need, you know, somebody gets into some place, that's who's going to come minister to you. Right. It's not going to be some, you know, ministry out there in, in Indiana. God bless them. <laughs> not that I have anything against Indiana. Um, but it's just the reality. So we started doing that, and we saw God's faithfulness over and over and over again. Yeah, I got one more story. I can't help but tell this one story because this, this ties into generosity. God gave us so much, you know. Um, I just I want to say this to you. I want to think about how generous. God doesn't have to be this generous. Just think about your taste buds. Let's take that for an example. Do you know you have like, hundreds of taste buds that can taste a var variety of different flavors. You know, God could have basically put in there salt and sugar. <laughs> it would have been done. You know, like, that's good. You got your covered. You're not going to die. But God gave us these taste buds that can just, like, tune in to all these variety of flavors and nuances, okay? I mean, they've got people who get their taste buds insured, you know, <laughs> wine connoisseurs and, and some of these uh, top restaurant critics, you know. But it's like there's so much just in that. It's crazy. God didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And we were at Fioli Gardens. We, Robin's birthday this week celebrated. The Fioli. I don't know how to say it. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Dynasty was filmed there. You've got to be old to even know that. Um, but it's just a, an amazing. <laughs> it's true. It's, that was the 80s. It was, it's a crazy, beautiful place. you know. And I'm thinking, look at these flowers. Look at these gardens. Look at this 54,000 square foot house. Look at this place. It's amazing. And then I start thinking, you know, God doesn't have to be that generous. And I thinking, look at this. This is double delight. I took a picture of this rose called double delight. It smells incredible. And it is so beautiful. You know, God is so generous. The, the things that he's created for us to enjoy. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So wrapping it up here. Discovery is culture. Our culture here in discovery is not heavy-handed. It's a very open-handed church community. I mentioned... Uh, unsheltered friends, outreach, offerings, all these things. But we don't just give money. We give time. We share our God-given talents as well. And that's huge. In fact, sometimes I think that's the bigger thing. It is the bigger thing. So how do we continue to grow in this kind of, of open-handed uh, core value where we're generous? Well, let me just give it to you this way. And the keys uh, can come on up now as we're wrapping up. How do you continue to grow in generosity? Number one, I'd say this. Recognize what you have already received. What's that mean? Well, we've been talking about it. What's the greatest miracle? The gift of salvation. Did you already receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? If you didn't, we can do that right now, today, this morning. But if you've received that, you've already experienced the greatest miracle. Because you're not only saved and blessed in this life to be generously receiving and giving, but you're blessed for all eternity. You're going to be with the Father. You're going to be with Jesus. You're going to be with God for all eternity. And, uh, well, we don't have time to go into all that. But do you realize, do you recognize what you already have in Christ? Because you can't give what you haven't received. If you don't recognize this, and I think there's many levels of this. You can receive Christ, and it can be kind of, oh, grasping for salvation. I, I, that's fine. That's good. doesn't matter where the starting point is. But it's just a starting point. Because if you go further on, you're going to receive more and more. You're going to receive revelation of the love of God. That God would love me in my lowest state. You know, again and again, you go through life. 44 years since I first asked Jesus into my heart. And I keep seeing new dimensions of Him to this day. There's new things. There's new horizons. There's new lessons to learn. And there's more to receive. And if you recognize that, you've got the greatest gift already. Two, act on what you've received. What's that mean? Well, you may find out that if you act, take that one little step, you think for, for some people that might be a pretty big step of faith. Well, you talked about giving 10%, man. What is, is, that, is that on my gross or my uh, after tax? You, you start to give and you go, wow, this is really incredible because now I'm seeing I've got even more to give. It's like you, you show yourself to be a good steward with your time. This applies in all areas. If you show yourself to be a good steward with your time and your gifts, your spiritual gifts, your talents, your natural gifts, and with your 
treasure, finances, then you're going to get more. That's the reward. God's reward is, look, if you're faithful with little, I'll make you faithful over what? Much. If you're faithful with little, I'll make you faithful over much. That's God's promise. So you're going to find out it's easier to get generous, actually. The further time goes on, you see God's faithfulness, His generosity over and over again. Finally, number three, don't stop the flow. Have you ever heard about the Dead Sea? You know the Dead Sea, right? In the Holy Land? So the Dead Sea is in, it's an interesting place. It's actually the lowest place on the earth. 1,200 feet below sea level. It's got a whole bunch of fresh streams. The Jordan River. Jordan River flows in. There's, there's several other little, little smaller streams that flow into the Dead Sea. But you know what the Dead Sea doesn't have? It doesn't have an outlet. That's why the Dead Sea is dead. There you go. Yeah, I know you already got that. I'm going to tell you. But it's like the same thing applies for you and me. If we want to be refreshed, we want to have that fresh living water, that fresh flow of the Spirit, that flesh, fresh uh, dynamite of God, then you got to keep it flowing. Don't stop the flow. Use your time, your talents, your treasures. Keep it flowing. Because if you keep flowing, guess what? You'll get refreshed. God's really good at in-flight refueling. You know those jets that can fly forever because they can get refilled while they're flying? That's what God does. We're always thinking, I, I do this. We all do this. We think, oh, God, if I, if I give too much, then, you know, God knows how to refresh you. You know, yeah, you, there are, you know, there is this thing called the Sabbath, and there's, there's time to get some downtime. And you create a wheel, start to flow, and you take a little time out. That's good. All that's important. But you got to keep the flow going. And you and I need to be generous with our resources, our talents, our treasures, and then we can get refreshed, too. I got this kind of bottom line word here. Faith grows where generosity flows.